listen to the victims of human rights violations, uh, it is very hard. Emotionally, it's very hard. Um, because uh, in many cases, you feel that you, you can't do very much. You can speak, but what can you do to someone who's lost their child, uh, someone who's, uh, who's been uh, tortured so severely? Um, they look to you to resolve all their problems. And this is not a job that's unemotional. This is a very emotional job for anyone who defends human rights. It seems to be a case of constant confrontation. In the diplomatic world, you're negotiating. There's some etiquette involved. Uh, in the world of human rights, uh, and particularly on the, uh, uh, from the side of the um, uh, High Commissioner, um, it's a lot of uh, st straight talking, and, uh, and it creates uh, a tension, which in the past I never used to experience. Uh, you see the atmosphere can often be very tense with, uh, with many of the um, uh, authorities that we deal with. The moment we do not support the human rights agenda, we see it rolling back in, in many parts of the world. And, and so it requires uh, constant uh, speaking out and reaching out to governments and beyond that. One of the main challenges is that, um, that governments have yet uh, to fully accept uh, criticism from an outside a UN uh, uh, source. And it creates, um, uh, of course, tensions back at home. But we think it's, it is uh, right to, to uh, shed a light on these violations where they occur. And, uh, and it, because in many parts of the world we have seen, as I said, a sort of a, a, a backlash or a, a regression in, in, the, in the way that human rights need to be upheld. It is a, a constant effort that is required to keep the momentum forward on the human rights agenda.